Hello everyone and uh, welcome to a new episode of uh, All Things IDA. In this episode, I'm going to be covering cross-references, how to use cross-references programmatically in IDA Python. Cross-references uh, are very, very useful for custom analysis. You're writing a script, they're very useful. Uh, and in IDA Python, uh, it's super easy to actually work with cross-references, especially if we use the IDA YouTube, uh, YouTube module. So, as usual, I'm going to start with the SDK. Um, Cross-references are in xref.hpp, and there's not much really inside that file. Um, we have the code cross-reference types. These are the, when we get the cross-reference block, as we'll see, we can check if it's a code or data cross-reference, and based on is code or not, we can check then for those flag FLCF or DR something. So for code cross references, we have a call cross reference, we have a jump far, jump near, or flow, call near. For data references, we have uh, write reference, read reference, and of course, uh, execute is basically a code cross reference. <clears throat> so for data, it could be read, could be written to or offset, and there's some archaic other uh, references. I personally have rarely seen these, these like say uh, Java processor modules and whatnot. So I am yet to see a DRI. Uh, I don't work much with Java bytecode to, to actually observe it, but say in uh, regular processors, you will normally run into RWO and call far, call near, and so on. <coughs> We can programmatically add cross-references, so either api.add code ref from to what kind, so this is synthetic user cross-reference. We can delete data cross-reference, either api.del ref as well, delete code cross-reference, and the xref block. So this is uh, basically a utility class where we can use in such a manner. We define an xref block and then we uh, start the enumeration uh, using one of the directions. Are we dealing, are we gonna ask cross-references uh, to a given address? So that means we're asking, we're answering the question. So if we're here, the cross-references, if I am on a given address, I can ask the question, give me the cross-references leading to this location. So this is xrefs2, so let's call this f4. So if I want to programmatically get all the cross-references uh, leading to F4, I'm going to do this code pattern. First two, and then next two, iterates, and then I can ask the from, from the block XB or XRF block dot from. So I start with two, and then gives me the from, which means who refers to this location. And we can do the opposite. The opposite, if uh, if we are at a call site, so I'm at an address, and I ask the question cross-references from, means from here, where can we go from here? And so we start the uh, iteration uh, in a different manner. We start from a given starting point. Where can we possibly go to? Now, the cross-references from giving us a set of two is useful, let's say, uh, in, in uh, addresses that have multiple destinations. This is like a switch. Let's find a switch. And a switch is, a, is, a, is gonna be a single point, but uh, from here, we can go to multiple locations. So either will automatically, the analysis will know how to associate and create programmatically the cross-references, such as when you ask the questions cross-references from, you get all the destinations. I'm gonna invoke it with Control J here. And so here we have seven destinations from this address to all of those seven destinations. Let's start. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to be using, I'm um, not gonna be using this construct, I'm going to be using IDAUtils. IDAUtils give us a single helper class, uh, or not a single one, but like uh, hides the XB behind the scenes. So we'll have to 
uh, generator functions. We'll have xrefs from and xrefs to, makes making things easy. So, for example, let's uh, import IDA utils and ask the question programmatically: Where can we go from here to somewhere else? So we're gonna say for x b in IDA utils dot x refs from from here, and uh, we have to give it an address or the current screen uh, location. Now we can uh, we can answer the question. leads to xb.2 and just for uh, illustration we can say and so on let's see Let's format it and clear the screen. All right. So this address leads to here, or here, or here, or here. And now, of course, we can ask the reverse question. If I'm at one of the destinations, I can ask cross-references to this address, and I get the from takes me back to the jump. Takes me back to the jump. So now I'm going to pick a random function. So here, let's call this uh, xrefs from, and we're gonna do uh, cross references too. So I'm gonna position myself at a function, and then ask who cross references that function. Right? Xrefs two. It's gonna be almost similar, except that we simply change the question. Let's see this one. Nah. Okay, so now it makes it a bit attractive to create a, fun uh, create a small script that returns the most referenced function, for example. That's a nice uh, exercise maybe we can finish with. Uh, let's see. All right, so this, this function here has a couple of callers, but we're going to uh, write the most popular function. So we want to know who, who reaches uh, this one. So same story, EA... Now, uh, ref uh, accessed, accessed by, we switch it to xrefs2 and accept from. Now, we cannot use the word from because from is a reserved keyword in Python, so it has been renamed only in Python. Uh, here, if we go to the xref block, it is called from, but uh, when we wrapped it in either Python, we changed it. And by the way, uh, here, remember the code, so we can check if it's code reference. So let's distinguish. So we have uh, two uh, calls, procedures, here, uh, call nears, and one uh, data cross-reference of type offset. So we can actually test for that, and I forgot to mention it earlier in, in the previous snippet. But here... First, let's uh, display everything without distinguishing. So, without distinguishing, we'll get everything like this. Three uh, rows. We got this, this, and this. Now, let's say we don't care about the data. So, we can say, if if not xb.isCode, uh, just skip it. Run it. Let me see. You see, again, same story, get screen EA. So, let's go back to a proper invocation point. Uh, all right, so this is where we want to either would have hard coded or I would not necessarily have to hard code. I, I could have said EA equal IDA API dot uh, get name EA takes uh, an address where from and the name and then gives us an EA. So here get name EA. I'm going to say bad address. I'm not looking for local names and just uh, let's say resolve it by name and, and that will be safer than uh, let's say uh, screen EA so I don't care now wherever I'm positioned all right so this should display now at f6 it should give us only two because we skipped anything that's not code all right so here we have uh, this one and this one now the one more thing I would like to mention 
is if we look at the cross-reference types, they're serial, they're not uh, bit fields, they're not orable flags. So that means if we have a data item, data item will make more sense to you, uh, a variable, a global variable, maybe it is being written to and read from. Then we will have two entries for a single address. One will be DRW, one will be DRR. So keep that in mind that you might encounter the same address multiple times and the difference would be only the cross-reference type. So let's display the type real quick. <coughs> 17, which is, of course, we only filter for its code. And so that means it's, it's going to be F, uh, FLCN or something. Uh, so here, FLCN. And that's what we see the 17 here. Let's remove that filter. You'll notice now we have one. This is for the data. Here, zero, one. Is an offset cross reference. Is it? If we go here to F6, we do have an offset cross reference. <coughs> so that's uh, from N2. Now let's finally make a busy uh, func. Um, if you recall from previous videos, we know how to enumerate functions. So we're going to enumerate functions. And uh, I don't know how to do it yet. I'm, I'm going to maybe edit it in a second. But let's see. For, um, we're going to enumerate functions. We get the function starts. And now for every function, we want to count uh, all uh, code course references to it. We can filter what kind of code course reference as well and so on. So I'm just now, just this code, I don't care if it's called near, go far, and so on. Um, so we have the function EA now. Let's uh, check this and count them here. We have to enumerate, unfortunately. We, uh, I, I'm not aware of a method to say get cross reference counts. So we'll have to do a simple dummy loop. Uh, um, so we're asking who refers to that function that we just enumerated. Let's just uh, uh, count if is code. Let's just uh, count it here, C. And here we can simply say tally of, uh, of the function itself equal the count. And uh, now uh, we have the whole thing. Let's see, len uh, tally. All we have to do is simply sort it by uh, by the count. So indeed, I do have uh, 200. And also, I would say, do, do we want the zero uh, counts? I don't know. If C, like this is orphan function, maybe we don't, nobody, we were not aware uh, who calls it. Let's see if it will decrease the length here. If there is, there are functions that nobody calls. Well, that's what it seems. Half of them, and I would say this is highly likely, could be exported functions that nobody calls within the program. Uh, could be just exported for you, and most of the functions that are referenced are internal functions. So that's very, very possible. Now, uh, uh, now let's just uh, try to uh, sort them by uh, popularity or like. The, by, by reference count. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's say uh, sorted tally equal uh, sorted uh, sorted um, the dictionary items so we get the pair. Um, the sorting key would be a lambda function takes the pair but the actual key for us is the tally, so it's going to be the, the count. And this should give us, I think, uh, uh, ascending. Um, we uh, sorted, let's see now, um, first, first, all right, uh, let's see. 
great. All right, so so um, let's reassign it. So and uh, we can now display all the function names. So um, the key is the function start. So func ea called count in sorted tally dot items and print f we can display func ea but it's not nice we're gonna get display the name as well and then id api dot get uh, get name func ea we cannot uh, i don't think we can fail on the get name here because again we got the functions defined by ida and functions cannot have empty names they can have dummy names but they have to have a name and uh, the count let's just uh, call count let's try ah sorry uh, so uh, we're still working with the dictionary. Okay. Um, all right. Good. So this is the busiest function. This is the second busiest function. And uh, let's rank them. Let's just rank them. All right. And here, let's just say rank clear the screen and let's uh, sync is called start great all right so like this would be uh, something curious like why is this to have the, the most called function in current 32 could be some kind of a logging function maybe Yeah, it's always getting like a string and some message and so on. So it makes sense. Move comes number eight. Sign function. It's called fifty six time in current thirty two. Interesting. Is it? This is the whole script. If you want to uh, have the busiest function, for example, really we used functions from before. We used cross references. We filter out non code cross references filter out uh, zero cross-references and uh, and then sort them. All right, uh, so that's it for today. I hope you found uh, as well another episode useful uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.